hello students welcome back to online classes today we are going to continue with the same chapter that is electricity and the very new topic is parallel circuit and series circuits as we know that there are two ways to do circuit in our house that is parallel circuit and series circuit so let us see what are parallel circuits in parallel circuits potential remains the same it means that if this is a parallel circuit and if we are going to connect as many as equipments in a parallel circuit the potential will remains the same that is 220 volt suppose this is a bulb so there will be a potential of 220 volt in the same way if a fan is connected over here then it will also have a 220 volt like if I am going to connect one more circuit over here, one more circuit over here, one more circuit over here and one more circuit over here. So the equipments that we are attaching over here, each equipment is going to have a same potential that is 220 volt. But in series circuit what happens? In series circuit potential is being divided. So if we are connecting two equipment like the first equipment is having 100 volt so the second equipment is going to carry 120 volt so as many as circuit you are going to attach it will divide the potential so I hope parallel circuit and series circuit is very much clear to everyone let us move to the difference between parallel and series circuit in parallel circuit potential remains the same but in series circuit potential is divided second is in parallel circuit if one device fails then other device will remain unaffected suppose in this parallel circuit if this bulb is fused so what happens it will not affect the second equipment the second equipment is going to carry the same current and it will run it will not stop but in series circuit if one fails other will fail like if this bulb will be will fuse what happens automatically or if there is any damage over here in this circuit so automatically this fan will also stop working i hope both the difference are clear to everyone let us move to third difference in parallel circuit equivalent resistance decreases where in series circuit equivalent resistance increases suppose if you are giving a 10 ohm of power to this and 10 ohm of power to this also so over here if we are going to find the equivalent resistance that is 1 upon r is equal to 1 upon r1 plus 1 upon r2 so over here we are going to add the resistance so it is getting 1 upon 5 so the value of r will be 5 but over here if we are giving a resistance of 10 ohm and 10 ohm to these two so to equivalent resistance will be r1 plus r2 plus and dash 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 so r will be 10 plus plus 10 plus ohm 10 ohm plus 10 so it will be 20 ohm it will be 20 ohm so over here you can see ohm uh, resistance is 20 ohm and over here the resistance is 5 so easily you can see that in parallel circuit equivalent resistance decreases and in series circuit equivalent resistance increases i hope all the three topics are clear to everyone let us move to another topic that is safety components as we are talking about electrical current or electrical circuit or electricity so there are various safety components also which keep us away from the harm of electricity so they are a fuse miniature circuit breaker that is called mcb and grounding so let us see what is a fuse a fuse is an essential safety device used in various electrical circuits it gives protection from overcurrent it comprises a metal strip or the wire that heats up or metals when there is a heavy flow of current as the safe limit of current is exceeded the fuse blows and the electric circuit is cut off a fuse is an automatic disconnection of supply in case of high currents it is an alloy of lead 
and tin with high resistivity and a low melting point. It is connected to the wire in the series. There are different types of fuses. Rewirable fuses, cartridge fu type fuses, switch type fuses, etc. Rewirable fuses are used in small appliances like wiring in the house, small scale industries and other small current applications. These type of fuses are made up of two metal clamps fixed on a porcelain base with a groove in between. When the fuse is damaged due to the heavy current, we can simply eliminate the fuse carrier and put back the fuse wire again. Cartridge type fuse is usually fitted in costly appliances. It consists of a length of fuse wire connected to metal cap at the end of a short glass tube. The fuse blows because of a short circuit due to worn out insulation on the connecting wire or due to overloading of the electrical circuit. The alternative to the fuse is a stabilizer or a circuit breaker. Miniature circuit breaker MCB are being utilized for lighting circuits. MCB serve the same purpose as a fuse that is they are used to protect an electrical circuit from an overcurrent. But unlike a fuse, MCB does not have to be replaced every time a fault occurs and it can be reused. MCB requires only resetting when it trips down. Let us move to the last topic that is grounding. Electrical grounding or grounding is used as a safety measure to help prevent people from accidentally coming in contact with electrical hazards. It is done by collecting a green ground wire from the metal casing of the appliances to the earth with the help of conductor. Typically with collection is a grounding electrode such as a ground rod. Now, what is grounding? Suppose this is your meter in your house. So through this meter there is a live wire which through which the metal wire is being attached and it is being ticked inside the earth which is a where is a metal plate. So if there is an excess current flowing in your circuit so the grounding help is to diffuse that current inside the earth. As we know that earth is a huge sink of charges so whatever extra current is flowing in the circuit will be diffused inside the earth with the help of this wire or through the metal plate that is being digged inside the earth earthing provides a low resistant path for the current to flow to the earth and not through the body of a person using the gadget the process of electrically connecting to the earth is often called earthing let us move to another topic that is charge atoms. All matter is made up of atoms as we all know. An atom consists of a positively charged particles or protons, negatively charged particles or electrons and neutrons with no charge. In most atoms the number of protons is equal to the number of electrons. Since over here this is a proton so there is a positive charge and a negative charge. So we can say that the net charge on a atom is zero. Why? Because positive and negative are going to cancel each other. So the net charge on an atom is always zero. The negatively charged electrons cancel out the positively charged protons. This makes the charge of atom neutral or without a charge. And electrons spin outside the nucleus. They can sometimes break free from the atoms when an atom loses an electron. The atom becomes positively charged. This is because the atom now has more protons than electrons. The electrons that leave one atom then join another atom. An atom that gains an electron becomes negatively charged. An object is said to be electrically charged when the number of protons and electrons is not equal. I hope all the topics are very much clear to everyone. Next time when we are going to meet, I am going to start with a, with a very new topic. Till then, be safe and goodbye everyone.